Hello everyone, and thanks for watching the Fast Track Tutorials YouTube channel. If you like this tutorial, make sure to check out our full courses. The links to these are in the description. So in this quick tutorial, I want to show you how I create my roughness maps inside of Substance Designer. Because uh, a lot of people have requested it to me, and although I always found it like very basic to do, I just want to show you just in case you did not know this technique. So what I have over here is I have this material. Right now the roughness map is just white and as you can see it looks very dull. It has, like, it's a, has a very even shine and it just does not feel as interesting. So let's go ahead and just keep this in mind what we have over here. And I will show you or walk you through how I create my roughness maps. What I always do is, it does kind of depend on how you construct your material. But most of the time what you will have is in your material you will have like a very base colors. Which does not have a lot of detail yet. Something like this, for example. It does not have a lot of detail yet, but it just has like some basic colors. This is often before you start adding all of the dirt and everything. So let's say this one. Uh, now actually, you know what? Let's just do this one over here. What I like to do is I like to add, if you press space, add something called a grayscale conversion node. And I always like to just turn this one into a grayscale. This is going to be our very base of our roughness. Now a nice thing on this, what you can do, is you can then go ahead and you can add, for example, a histogram range. And what you can do is with the histogram range, with like a simple slider, you can basically control how much of the roughness you want. So as you can see, I can set my range up, but then I can just mess around with my position. Now remember, if a roughness is white, it will look dull. If it is black, it will look very shiny. So just keep that in mind. So what we have right here is, for example, this roughness... Um, it is stone, so I'm gonna actually leave it at 0 0.5, probably, for like the default, so that all of these stones that we have over here have like slightly different roughness amounts. That will look quite nice. But then for the grout in between, I want to make that one looking extra dull, while right now, because it is darker, it will actually look shinier. What I can do is I can, it's just going to be about overlaying masks. So I add a blend to this, and I simply find the mask for my grout. And most of the time you should have like some kind of a mask for this. So if I go over here, I can like uh, trace this back and I can see exactly like where a good mask is. This one is for example a good mask because it exactly follows my grout. I can then grab it and I can simply throw the actual mask into my foreground. Because you will most like most time just be using the blending modes add and subtract. With the art, I can just add it on top, which means that it looks very white. And with the subtract, I can make it look very dark. So you can imagine what I can do, is I can add this mask. And if this is too much, I can then just go ahead and go into my opacity. And I can basically tone it down. So let's say over here, this is now a little bit duller. Now I want to go ahead and I want to make my dirt a little bit more visible. I can do this by adding a blend. And I can simply add the mask of my dirt. So if we, for example, cycle through... Our shape over here. Um, we do have some stones over here. Which I actually also want to add. But let's first do the do the dirt. So over here. Here see. We have some dirt mask. What I can do is I can grab this mask. Throw this here in the top. And I can set this for example to add. So that, it, so that also the dirt looks duller. Because I feel like so something like dirt and dust. It will feel quite flat. Compared to like the stones below it. So you can just go ahead and play around with your opacity to get it like, like a nice level. And then we can say, okay, so remember those stones. Let's say I want to do those first. Let's add a blend in between here. And then we had those little stones in our grout, which you can see over here. So if we just go to the mask, here, see? It would be cool if I make these a little bit shinier, like they catch the light a little bit. I can add these stones, and I can set them to subtract. So the reason I want to make these shinier is because... They also have a norm map, so those little stones, hopefully they will kind of like catch the light a little bit and they will just look interesting in general. So I don't want to go too overboard, so let's just give it like a little bit of color. Then we have our dirt over here. And let's add another plant and let's see if there's anything else that we want to add. So we add some dirt. Oh yeah, here we add even more dirt, so that's quite nice. And let's see, let me just double check to make sure... Okay, so after that we don't do too much. So let's grab this dirt over here, which is also looking very nice. Art is on top. And let's also set this one to be an art. And then just tone it down a little bit. See, and just like that, we very quickly can create a very interesting looking roughness map. 
Now on top of this you can just go ahead and you can see if there's anything else. What is this for example? Oh this is like white dirt. Um, I don't really care too much about it. You can do it if you want. So the white dirt often would be like a little bit more shinier. Because it's just like a worn out stone for example. So you can like add one extra blend. You can add this white dirt on top. And this time set this to be subtract so that it's a little bit darker. Just give it like a little bit of like a, some variation like this. Now when you're happy you can go ahead and you can add this to your roughness slot. And this was our original roughness so you can see that we definitely made an improvement. Often what I then do so I put all of these pieces into place. I don't even know yet if it will look good but at least now everything is into place. So what I can do now is I can balance it. So I now have this here. If I switch back to marmoset you can see that now over here all of our roughness is much more defined and based upon this i can just have a look i often use a three point lighting system so that i get like these really strong lights over here and they give me the ability to have like a better look and i can also for example move my light to give me a better look at how the roughness would look also in like the distance so this is what we got right now it is looking pretty cool i think what i'm going to do is i'm going to make my actual stones a little bit uh, darker over here then we have this stuff so here we can see like is our grout looking extra dull it is and you can see like some of those highlights here if i just go to this camera let's see if i can really like show you here you can see like some of the highlights so when you go up close you can see how everything is looking so actually when i see this they might actually be a little bit too shiny so let's go ahead and let's actually not make them any darker or maybe like make them tiny bit darker and then we add this stuff on top. Then we have like these little bits. Let's uh, make them stand out a little bit more by making those darker. Let's make our dirt also a little bit whiter. So that it's really just like you can really see the difference between your stones and the dirt. And it because it automatically exports for me. I can like have another look at this. Here we go. So now we get like quite an interesting look. So you can see that the dirt over here it is looking nice and dull. But then we just have like our flat stone, stone sitting in between. And of course in our main render which is this one that will look quite nice and over here we get like some nice shine so then yeah when you're done with it and you think okay so that is looking nice i can for example make an image of it and i will just pass the video and then i will also go ahead and actually make an image of it with our roughness uh, being the old roughness and then we can kind of like see and compare here we go so what I did is I just went ahead and I exported one version that is with our roughness and one version that is with our plain color. And then what I did is I simply went ahead and took the screenshots and here we go. So this is the one before. So this is the one without our roughness map. And this is the one after. So you can see that that actually makes a very large difference. And it just here it adds. It might seem like a small detail but it actually adds a lot of detail over here and of course if you are playing this in an environment where you're walking around and everything it will be even more obvious so that is the ways that i use to create our roughness maps and that was about it so i hope that you enjoyed this tutorial course uh, or tutorial course i hope that you enjoyed this tutorial video and if you did uh, then please leave a like and don't forget to subscribe thanks